Hello. So we're back. We're graphing inverse variation type problems. And I got two here right now. Y equals 1 over x, which is our basic one. And this time I added some flavor to it. Y equals 1 over x plus 2. And this actually uh, changes more than just the graph itself. It actually changes the uh, horizontal asymptote of the graph as well. And we'll get to that. And I'm going to do an overview after, not this lesson, but the next one after, about uh, how you can identify horizontal and vertical asymptotes with this graph. Which is actually pretty cool in my opinion. But anyways, back to what I was going to say. So if I substitute in the values for the first one, y equals 1 uh, over x, and I do the same ones, 1 over x is undefined. I'm sorry, 1 over 0 is undefined, so... 1 over 1 is 1, 1 over 2 is 0.5. 1 over negative 2 is negative 0.5. And 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. When I do the same thing here, 1 over 0 automatically just makes it undefined no matter what. Bam! You're not going to add 2 to it afterwards. 1 over 0, undefined. 1 over 1 is 1, but then you add 2, it's 3. 1 over 2 is 0.5 plus 2, which is 2.5. 1 over negative 2 is negative 0.5 plus 2, which is 1.5. And 1 over negative 1 is negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. So I went ahead and I did that very quickly. Now I'm going to graph these. I will graph the first one in... Eh, I already have black, so I'll just do black. So at negative 2, it's negative 0 0.5. At negative 1, it's 1. At 0, it's undefined. At 1, it's 1. And at 2, it's 0 0.5. Now, it's the same type of graph. You might not believe me, but if you plug in, or if you substitute in values that get closer and closer to 0, on this side, you know, negative values that get closer and closer to 0, there is a dramatic drop. And it will never touch, no matter what value you use, it will never actually touch. And if you use values that go further on the number line to the left, it gets closer and closer to uh, uh, negative zero, I suppose is the way to think about it, but it well, might be a poor way. But it'll never touch. There's a horizontal asymptote, which means it never touches, and there's a vertical asymptote. As x approaches negative infinity, y is going to get infinitely closer to zero. That's a limit but we haven't talked about limits specifically. As uh, x approaches 0 from the left, it get, it, uh, the limit's going to be negative infinity. Graph these. As it gets closer to 0 from the right side, the values for y are going to go up and up and up, and as it, the x values get higher or go to the right, the y value is going to get closer and closer to 0. So that's the graph for the first one. So again, if I do the domain and range, Let's go with that one. It's negative infinity to infinity except 0. It does not include 0. Not equal to 0, but from negative infinity to infinity. There's another way to write it, too. I think teachers use unions and intersections. I was never a big fan of that when I was a student. I just did this, and fortunately, my teacher accepted it. Uh, it goes from negative infinity to infinity for the range, the y values, except it does not include the value 0. Bam. Yeah. Vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. That's its vertical asymptote. If you graph x equals 0, it's a straight line. Its horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0. So horizontal and vertical asymptote are basically the points it doesn't touch on the graph, which are the points that are excluded from its domain and range. That's a cool way of thinking about it. If I do this one, I will do this one in uh, red. Negative 2, 1.5. Negative 1, 1. Um, 0 undefined, 1, 3, and 2, 2.5. Now, as my uh, x values get closer and closer and closer to 0 from the left side, what happens is it'll go down like this. It'll never actually reach, but it'll keep going down and down forever, never crossing this y-axis. And 
as my x values become uh, progressively higher negative numbers, what's really fascinating here is that it will never reach the value Uh, if I keep plugging in negative values, this will be negative something, blah, blah, blah. This will get closer and closer to zero. But when I'm adding two, uh, it's going to get infinitely closer and closer. But it will never actually go past this part right here. And I think that's so fascinating when I first learned it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so cool. Uh, it's true on the other side as well. If I substitute in values that get closer and closer to zero, uh, you can do that in the calculator, you can do that in your head. Your graph looks like this, but as I get further and further and further and further away, uh, it'll get infinitely closer to 2, you know, this will be a very small number plus 2, but it'll never actually reach 2. So what happens is the vertical asymptote is still the same. It's at x equals 0 for this graph. But the uh, horizontal asymptote is at y equals 2. Now, there is a direct correlation between uh, the plus 2 and the horizontal asymptote. See, whether or not you want to admit it, this graph is 1, uh, excuse me, y equals 1 over x plus 0. The horizontal asymptote is whatever you're adding to the 1 over x. And in this case, since you're not adding anything, the horizontal asymptote is 0. Uh, 1 over x plus 2, the horizontal asymptote is just that 2. That's, that's not by chance. That is, in fact, what happens. So it's really cool. Uh, the domain and range, very fascinating. Go from negative infinity to infinity, except you can't include this value here. So it's not equal to zero, but everything from negative infinity to infinity otherwise. Well, you can't actually include negative infinity to infinity. The range is the same as the first one, negative infinity to infinity, except you can't include your horizontal asymptote. It never actually touches through. The graph never goes through this two, so it doesn't include two. And like I said, if you just want to see what your domain and range are for inverse variation, just look at your horizontal asymptote and your vertical asymptote and don't include that. Vertical, vertical asymptote goes with the domain, horizontal asymptote goes with the range. Actually, I should say that's excluded in the domain and excluded in the range. But pretty cool. So what we're going to do next is put a value, uh, adding or subtracting with the x, and see how that affects the graph. But this uh, value right here, when you add something to the 1 over x afterwards, affects its horizontal asymptote and its range. So I hope that was helpful. We'll continue along, but for right now, have a great day. Goodbye.